Right. Another another day, another project, another video. <clears throat> this is a power supply of, of a friend of mine, Nick. Uh, it's an EP uh, EP925 Shalman Mason, whatever they're they're all the same. Uh, the power supply is not working properly. Uh, symptoms: It's uh, the power supply should do from uh, three to sixteen volts, I presume. Uh, it's actually doing from uh, thirteen to twenty, uh, and when you plug a load, <coughs> when you plug a load, um, the amperage uh, drops, the voltage drops, no amperage comes out. We're gonna use for testing basic a load 12 volt load it's uh you know those uh teacup or mobile uh camping whatever you want to call it uh tea brewers uh, to um to boil the water in a cup uh she draws she she draws around 10 to 12 amps we're going to use it to diagnose where the fault is at least to test uh, transformer voltage transistors and so on uh, vo uh, well the voltage transistors uh, will be with my tester but it's only to put the load on the on the transformer just to check the transformer and uh, uh, what's going on <clears throat> at the moment I've got the multimeter uh, it's showing a bit of voltage. The capacitors haven't discharged. Still, uh, I was uh, I was uh, trying to repair this power supply, and I'll make a video out of it. It might help other users uh, with problems with power supplies. Linear. This is a linear power supply. It's not a switch mode. <laughs> By the way, if you uh, a radio operator with expensive material I don't advise to uh, you guys to use switch mode always use linear uh, uh, there's uh, uh, there's not a lot that can go wrong with them and uh, when it goes wrong uh, they don't end up shooting 30 or 40 volts into uh, equipment or even more a switch power supplies can discharge a lot of amperage and and a lot of voltage when they go wrong right <clears throat> we're gonna test uh, first the transformer uh, uh, this video is gonna be uh, step by step what I'm testing and um, uh, trying to find the fault so we got the multimeter hooked up uh, to the rectifier please uh, do not touch electric equipment uh, if you're not uh, a, a, a certified professional I'm not a certified professional and I, I do this at my own risk so uh, be very careful <laughs> you might end up dying right uh, we got uh, we got um, the multimeter um, uh, onto the connected onto the rectifier, the bridge rectifier. We're going to check if there's a drop of voltage on the transformer. Transformer might be uh, good or bad, I don't know. Uh, just gonna put a load to it. <coughs> uh, just hold on a second. Uh, let me pause the video and uh, I'm gonna turn it on and uh, get the load ready. Hold on. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to turn it on. As you can see, showing voltage in there around 39. <clears throat> the transformer is providing 24 volts. That's normal uh, from, uh, let's just say, uh, 14 to 20 odd volts is, is normal. Uh, it depends on the transformer that the power supply <clears throat> as they're normally uh, from 
from 13 or 14 to 16 but this one has got 24 it's not a big problem uh, I've got a load yet and let's see what happens to the voltage when I place I've only got uh, two hands I've got nobody to let's see if I can put a load uh, oh, give me a second watch I'm gonna put the load now and watch the voltage dropped but transformer still shows 24 volts so uh, not a fault on the transformer let's go next step check capacitors I don't think is uh, needed some measuring uh, uh, like you see this she uh, if the capacitors weren't doing the job you'd read um, well if the rectifier failed uh, you probably uh, wouldn't read but let's check the capacitors and uh, let's see how it goes give me a sec right the next test is only to find the health of these two capacitors there they're in um, in parallel <clears throat> I've seen other setups uh, this is the first time that I've seen this one it might be an old model or uh, it might have been manufactured with different specs but um, uh, this one is 27,000 UF and this one I think is 20 22 22,000 UF so that's 40 49 uh, 49,000 uh, UF or um, uh, 49 uh, MF uh, so we're going to test the capacitance we, we disconnected the leads from the bridge rectifier I've got it hooked up on a, an LSR uh, let's measure the capacity of these two big capacitors <clears throat> They've been fully discharged already. Be careful because <laughs> touching big capacitors, you might end up dying. So, like I said, uh, this job, uh, I get uh, 47 uh, MF, so uh, 47,000 UF. So, we, it's within the limits, 20% tolerance is within the the tolerance so capacitors they're still very good um, uh, very low uh, resistance uh, 0.23 uh, so in very good condition uh, in still uh, in very good condition in my opinion so <clears throat> let's carry on um, um, now uh, I'm gonna have to disassemble this it sinks there's five five uh, voltage transistors on them I've already checked or uh, I've already changed the driver uh, very quickly uh, but the driver uh, it was working correctly uh, but uh, it didn't make a change on the power supply I thought it was the driver that um, it, it was malfunctioning uh, usually they end up doing that uh, cutting the voltage down and uh, the driver doesn't want to drive the um, voltage transistor so now we got to disassemble uh, all the top heat sink I think it's got you can see the back of the uh, at the back there's two of them in here and there's uh, three more in here there's uh, in total five voltage transistors uh, this in here is a thermostat, so it should shoot uh, the fan when ta the thermostat reaches uh, a, a certain temperature from the heating. So uh, I'll stop the video and I'll, I'll disassemble what I can. Uh, this video is being done by parts and show you how to, uh, you know, troubleshoot your power supply. Please. Uh, this job, uh, I'll repeat again, it should be done by a competent engineer. Uh, <laughs> you might end up dying again. Right, I'll stop the video and um, 
disassemble the heat sink and uh, expose the uh, transistors. I could uh, test uh, these two by cutting the wires, these two wires, and placing uh, the tester on them. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I need, I've got no access to the uh, bottom ones. And you know, I could get the wires from here, but it's a bodge up. I prefer to. Um, I prefer to uh, disassemble it because as you seen I had the driver is a bit in an angle because I, I couldn't raise this uh, heat sink properly so I'll have to redo the uh, driver with a bit of um, thermic paste and so on so you know uh, I'll stop the video and um, uh, you guys uh, don't have to stop just stay there uh, I'll be a minute the easiest way that I found <clears throat> to disassemble it was uh, cutting the a few wires. <clears throat> I'll join them later with each ring. But um, now I can test the transistors. I've isolated um, two of the legs of the transistors on top. Um, I'm going to do the same with the bottom. But uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, how to test the transistor right <clears throat> I've got the LSR uh, connected to the transistor and he gave me it comes up with as a capacitor well uh, transistors they got a bit of capacitance but it should show up um, at least two diodes or three diodes um, it should show up as a transistor, not a capacitor. But it's showing up as a capacitor on the um, on the on the LSR. Let's see others. Right, <clears throat> I've removed a few transistors off of it <clears throat> because they might be uh, reacting with the chassis or the heat sink <clears throat> because the heat sink is connected to ground. Let me lower the radio. <clears throat> Let's put it on uh, this one, and I've just got, uh, just got a, a few of them on the mail <clears throat> to repair it. I do presume uh, most of them they're blown, but let's grab one and test it. This is a brand new one. Uh, uh, let's uh, put the LSR onto it and see what he reads. Right, I've got it hooked up. <clears throat> the one that I've removed. Oops, came off. Came. Okay, I've got it hooked up again. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, let's see what he reads. I'm going to press the LSR. It, it still reads as a capacitor outside the heat sink. Let's try uh, a brand new one, what he reads. Right, I got the new one hooked on and let's see what he reads and it's NPN transistor that's a proper reading that's a brand new one so um, reads totally different um, I'll carry on um, at the moment uh, I'm gonna remove the other ones and fit these new ones that are right today and let's see how it goes Right, here we are, fully assembled. <clears throat> I had to replace all the voltage transistors. <clears throat> uh, she's plugged on to uh, a lot. It's not, it's, I think it draws around two amps. But uh, let's power it up. Um, so around, <clears throat> as you can see the bulb, it barely lights up. So. 3 volts, from 3 volts you can see it's drawing uh, 2 to 3 amps so 15 to 16 or 17 um, she's fully working um, drawing the load is drawing and <clears throat> she doesn't cut off voltage so fully fixed I hope you enjoy the video uh, the problem on this one was 
uh, de voltage transistors. <coughs> uh, the driver for the transistors was also replaced, but there was nothing wrong with it. It was the voltage transistors. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, um, and, um, subscribe if you want. Uh, bye bye from the Coyote right now. Um, uh, soon you'll see another project.